Okay, time for another episode of PowerShell. This is episode 2, learning parameters and properties. So, let's jump straight back into it and let's just load up a couple of things here. So first of all, we have on the right hand side some PowerShell, on the left hand side some command prompt. So in command prompt, if you want to run a command, like for example time, that thing is called a command. But over here in PowerShell, we call them command LUTs. So what is the difference between a command and a command let? So if I run something like get date, there's the current date time. There really isn't a difference between a command and a command let. It's just a command you put into the system. Um, they call them command lets. Um, it was said that they call them command lets for really SEO purposes. So if you search on the internet for how to change an IP address command, you'll get results for everything. You'll get results for Cisco, you'll get results for Linux, you'll get results for all sorts. Whereas if you say how to change an IP address command let the only thing you're going to get back is PowerShell. Um, so yeah, that's the reason, apparently, that they're called commandlets. So when we go and look at these commandlets, let's launch PowerShell ISC, uh, just so we can have a little bit more room to play with down here. Normally, PowerShell commandlets are relatively human readable. Now, there's no actual uh, thing in PowerShell that prevents people from writing commandlets with whatever names they actually want, but normally PowerShell commandlets start with things like get, set, new, add, remove, and so on and so forth. So we could run things like you know, get dash service. Okay, and go run that, and there shows me all the actual services in my environment. We might do something like set dash ad user. Now I haven't actually got the Active Directory PowerShell module installed, and we'll discuss PowerShell modules later on for that, but that will actually go and change settings in a user's Active Directory um, account or an Active Directory object. You could do something like new-item. Now with new-item we can create lovely little things like folders. So new-item dash item type is directory path is c colon backslash and name is going to be temp. And if I go and run that line, I actually get here, let's have a look inside this PC, see, I get a document called, or a document, a directory called temp. Not particularly interesting, so let's go and delete that. Um, we could also do things like, you know, adds and removes, and there might be all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff we can do with this, but most of our PowerShell commandlets are relatively human readable. Now, something to actually take note of here, though. PowerShell commandlets have these things called parameters. So let's bring up a new window here. And let's go have a look at this get dash event log. Now, get dash event log is going to have a number of parameters. What is a parameter? Well, if I put a space and a dash, this lot, these are parameters. Parameters are going to be entry types into this commandlet. This is going to later input data into this commandlet and run this commandlet accordingly. Commandlets themselves are a little bit like small programs uh, and for these programs to work we need to give them kind of data. So if we do something very simple on here, log name security newest one. Now notice I didn't actually type that um, all myself. You could probably hear my keyboard clacking away in the background here. But if I bring up a list of um, these parameters, if I type in just enough to make that parameter unique, I can press tab and I can actually make that autocomplete for me. Uh, for example, you know, we could do get dash date and we could see there is certain parameters here. And do the same thing in the shell. I'm tabbing through them, but you can tab forwards. If you hold shift and press tab, you go backwards, which is quite nice. So forwards and backwards. Tab and shift tab, that's always useful. So if you want to know what commandlet, what parameters a commandlet actually supports, what do we really need to do? Well, if you go and look at the documentation, they recommend you actually go and run get help. So let's make this a bit bigger and let's change this around um, just so you can see this a little bit differently. So if I go and run get dash help, 
get dash event log whoops event log and go and run that line first of all this is going to bug me now this will bug you in Windows 10, it'll bug you in Windows Server 2016 and 2012 as well actually uh, PowerShell doesn't actually have the whole of the help files actually installed by default so if you press yes that will actually go down to Microsoft or up to Microsoft and download the latest help for PowerShell I'm not going to bother updating my help at the moment we're just going to go and see the very basic bits of help here for this command and we can see all of these lovely little parameters uh, for what kind of information I can actually input here into this get dash event log so we can see there's things like log name, instance ID, computer name, newest and so on and so forth but notice that each of these types like for example log name support a specific data type so we've got things like string and long and date time and string as well something to bear in mind is when you see this these two square brackets that means array so if you had a string data type something like banana that might be actually just a string okay Whereas if I've got multiple data, multiple bits of data, like banana and apple and pear, something like that, this would actually be an array, or more to the point, a string array. So this means we've actually got multiple data types. When we see this actually within a command, what we can do is we can assume that we can put multiple bits of data in there if we really want to. That's kind of cool. There's other data types like long and int for integer and so on and so forth. If you want to see these data types, we can come up here onto a uh, lovely website here, ss64.com. And these are some of the basic PowerShell data types. So string is uh, it's just text. Okay, It's just text itself. It could be letters, numbers, special symbols. It doesn't actually matter down there. Some of these are m some of the most common ones. Integer here is actually a 32-bit number. Long is actually a 64-bit number. In fact, you can have long or you can have int64 as your data types as well. Booleans are true falses. Uh, decimals are up to 128-bit decimal values down there. We will actually discuss in future episodes a few of these different types of data types, and especially things like XML objects and how to actually interface with and uh, manipulate XML objects within PowerShell. That's actually quite cool. We'll also look at how date time really kind of functions here within PowerShell, as they're essential components to doing a lot of administration uh, within PowerShell itself. So we can see, for example, log name requires a string data type, something like security down here, because that's a log name in event log. All that I'm really doing here is I'm looking at event viewer, which we can see from here, basic event viewer, um, in PowerShell. The rule to really remember with PowerShell is everything you can do pointy clicky, you can do typey typey. Whereas newest, for example, is going to require a number of some sort. So if you see newest here, that's actually got an integer down there. So I can put newest five, and that will give me the last five entry types. Now, if I really want to see how to use this command properly, um, there is a couple of options within get help. Uh, another one that you can put on the end of this is full. And if you run get help, your command let and put dash full on there, you'll get a lot more information down here for the command let. And you can see what all of these parameters actually are for the command let. Are you actually going to use this? Maybe. I mean, you can use it just for checking a couple of things. But in reality, no, not really. You want help on a PowerShell command let? Google is your friend, honestly. If you go to get dash event log, just whack that into Google, you will turn up with docs.microsoft.com down here. And docs.microsoft.com is where the PowerShell documentation actually lives. You're going to spend a lot of time in here. Okay. Um, it's docs.microsoft.com now. It used to be years ago TechNet. Microsoft decided that TechNet was a bit of a mess, which it was. So they decided to kind of nuke that one, and um, it's now all docs.microsoft.com, all very, very nicely laid out. And if we look at the PowerShell 5.1 documentation here, there's a few examples about how this command actually works, and there's a few other examples down here about what all the individual parameters actually do. It's the same information, but with more detail. Okay, If you really want to know how a command look works, get help is only going to get you so far. You really want to look at the actual documentation itself. Okay. 
There is one more thing down here that we really want to talk about is we want to actually see properties. There's two sort of things we have to really think about which is input and outputs um, of data. So your inputs are normally actually going to be um, your parameters, okay, which is log name and newest. Your outputs on the other hand are going to be properties. Again, you'll find out later on that I cannot actually spell for toffee. So let's go and have a look at something very simple. Let's do a get service spooler again. So just get the print spooler service. Notice I have here three properties. I have status, I have name, I have display name. These are actually showing as an object and we'll get to objects later on but for the moment you can consider objects a little bit like an Excel spreadsheet. So you can actually see here PowerShell knows the relationship between its data what I mean by that is if I go and get multiple services, so let's just go and run the get service command to get all of these. So we can see the statuses of all the services that are actually running on this computer. You'll notice that within uh, PowerShell, PowerShell actually knows about the fact that this is a column of data and these are titles of the properties of the data and we could subselect each individual line. It understands the relationship between the data. Imagine the differences being like this being as an Excel spreadsheet versus this being in a text document. In an Excel spreadsheet you can do a lot more with filtering that data and actually playing with that data itself. But there's something else with this. Let's just go and have a look at just run get service spooler again to bring one back. These are properties. Status, name, display name. We'll do a lot with properties later on. This is the output of the data. There is a very, very, very important commandlet here. Okay? And that incredibly important commandlet is if I just put a pipe on the end of this. If you can't find the pipe key on your keyboard, it's to the left of the Z key on your keyboard. Um, well, at least on the UK keyboard anyway. Um, the pipe command takes the output of one command and puts it into another and we're going to look at get member. Now get member you will use a lot. This will show me all the properties that I can actually bring back from this command loop. So if I go and run uh, FA on there, you'll see the get service spooler has a whole bunch of stuff going on with it. This is exactly what get service spooler can actually output and what it can also take as well. Don't worry about the methods and the events and everything at the moment, but just focus on properties. These are the possible outputs of this data. So you can see things like display name, machine name, site, startup type, and status. Now if we notice if we just run get service spooler, it doesn't display all of those properties. If you don't tell PowerShell exactly what properties you want to bring back from a commandlet, it kind of decides on that for you. Depending on the logic that somebody has put in for that commandlet, they'll say, okay, look, he hasn't given me, uh, he or she hasn't given me any properties. I will just give them what I think they're actually going to need. Now we can actually go and select some of these properties. So we can do things like get dash service again, spooler. And if I use this command, select, I can actually go and select individual properties. So if I go and select, for example, status, status, and actually just run that command, you'll notice I'm just retrieving status is running. If I do status, comma, space, name, and run that again, I'm getting name and status. I could also do other properties down here. So I might do something like uh, machine name. Now I'm just getting machine name here from the property itself that I've already looked up via get member. I can go and press F8 and run that. Machine name is dot, which is localhost, the one that I'm currently running on. If you want to cheat and you want to actually get all of the properties, we can just put select star in there. It accepts a wild card. That's all nice. And we can very quickly see all of the properties that are coming back from that specific um, command that you've actually run, which is nice. Um, another example of that might be let's do get dash child item. Now get child item is the equivalent of dir and if we put something like c colon backslash in there and whack f8 notice I'm getting the directory path of the root of c. Perfectly fine, it's got Windows Admin Center Preview in there and a few other bits and bobs in there. Now again if I pass that to get member now I can also abbreviate this to gm if I don't want to actually type get dash member and I go and run oops, go and run F8 on that one. You'll see that I actually have a, again a lot more properties here than just the defaults. So if I go and run get child item C colon backslash and do select star, 
you'll see that there's a lot more information actually coming out of here. Things like full name, exists, well, yes, thankfully that does actually exist. Um, otherwise the file wouldn't actually appear. Creation times, last access times, all this sort of stuff that we're getting. Okay. So we could also do something very simple. Maybe our get child item C colon backslash is actually a selection of files in there. Maybe I want to actually do select uh, name comma last access time. I mean that might be a useful one. There's the last time that each of those folders and files were actually accessed. Imagine that's a big list of files that you have in a file share. That might be a nice useful information to see rather than having to go through and right click and properties on each individual file. It's quite useful. Uh, okay, so that's a very basic overview of parameters and properties and we've seen some property type or some parameter types and some data types in here. Uh, strings, characters, bytes and so on and so forth. Check out definitely the PowerShell documentation and if we open that up, this is a wonderful, wonderful site from Microsoft. Don't be afraid of it. I know TechNet previously wasn't great and it was kind of a bit of a mess. Um, but today, PowerShell documentation on docsmicrosoft.com, very good, very readable. Have a browse around there. Notice the incredibly important command get member. So again, if we copy get member, you will be using this command constantly throughout your time with PowerShell. And if we're going to actually have a look at the Microsoft documentation for that, here's the description of it and exactly what it does. I really advise you actually go through and read get member because it's something that you will constantly use all the time. And also remember, if you see a string, that is going to be a single point of data and a string array is anything with two squares on there and you'll be able to see or you'll be able to use that as a multiple entry type and it be able to insert multiple bits of data. Example of that again is something like get dash service and if we put dash name in there this name is a string type with two square brackets if you had a look at get if you have a look at get help which means I can do things like this spooler comma bits and I can actually put in multiple entries in there if I want to.